in this video we are going to be looking at the fixed point iteration so the fixed point iteration is a numerical technique used to solve the equation of the form f of x equals zero by rearranging this equation into the form x equals g of x and iteratively solving this solution to obtain the value of x now the formula for the fixed point iteration is given as xn plus 1 to be equal to g of xn where xn itself is the current approximation xn plus 1 is the next approximation and g of xn is obtained by rearranging the function f of x equal to 0. Now in fixed point iteration convergence is said to occur when the absolute value of the derivative of the function or g prime of xn is less than 1. Now, if you successively obtain the value of g of x from f of x equal to 0, then you take the derivative of g of x and find its absolute value, plug in the point of iteration into this um, derivative. If the value is less than 1, it means that the equation is going to converge faster at that given point but if the value is greater than one it means that the value is not going to converge rather it will keep jumping same as if the value is equal to one now let's pick an example and see now let's say we are asked to approximate the root of the equation x squared minus x minus one equal to zero assuming x naught is equal to one using the fixed point iteration method so remember the first thing I said, um, the fixed point iteration is used to solve equation of the form f of x equal to zero, okay, equal to zero, by rearranging this equation into x equals g of x. So this means that we are going to be rearranging this equation because this is now of the form f of x equal to zero. So we need to rearrange this equation to obtain um, x equals g of x, which means we need to make x the subject of the formula from this equation. Now, there are two ways of making x the subject of the formula from this equation. Let's go, let's go with the first way, simply by making x squared the subject of the formula. So let's try this and see. So from the equation, we can find x squared to be equal to 1 plus x. So this simply means that we can make x subject that becomes the square root of okay one plus x now the other way of doing that is that you can simply make um x subject of the formula so let's simply send negative x to this side of the equation negative x crossover becomes positive x right so you simply have x to be equal to x squared minus one so you now have two values of x now remember the law the law says that for convergence to occur it simply means that the absolute value of the derivative of g of x or um, of g of x is is going to be less than one okay so from here you can simply say that g of x on this side of the equation is simply equal to the square root of one plus x similarly from here you can simply say that g of x is simply equal to x squared minus 1 now let's find the derivatives okay so g prime of x over here g prime of x here is simply going to be not not, not forgetting this can also be written as um, 1 plus x all to the power of 1 all over 2 so let's find this derivative this becomes 1 all over 2 into 1 plus x to the power of negative 1 all over 2 if we differentiate this term right over here let's also find g prime of x if you do this you're simply going to have 2x now let's plug in these values into the equation and see if they are going to be less than 1 so the value you're plugging in now is the point of iteration x not equal to 1 let's plug x not equal to 1 into the equation and see so for the left hand side um, I will simply have g prime of 1 g prime of 1 is going to be equal to 1 all over 2 into this is now 1 plus 1 to the power of negative 1 all over 2. Over here, g prime of 1 is now going to be equal to 2 times 1. So g prime of 1, um, this is actually 2. And 2 is greater than 1. So which means 
we can't actually use this equation so this is now against the law for convergence to occur it simply means that g prime of the function at the given point must be less than one and on this side this is actually greater than one because two is greater than one so which means we can't use this equation as our g of x so but to further confirm if that's the case let's now find the value of this okay so over here this is going to be equal to 1 all over 2 multiplying now 1 plus 1 there is 2 2 to the power of 1 negative 1 all over 2 so let's obtain what this value is if you evaluate all of this you have approximately 0 0.3536 which is actually less than 1 so which means for this given question we are going to be using this as our g of x x equals root of 1 plus x or g of x equals root of 1 plus x so that means this is the equation we are going to be using for our fixed point iteration and not this particular one. so that's the first thing to do once you're given an equation you first of all convert it into this form make x subject of the formula so you have different options of x you can do that for all the values of x there then you test by differentiating each of the values of x then after differentiating you plug in the point of iteration into them any one that is less than one becomes the equation you will use for your iteration and discard the other ones okay so let's begin our iteration now so now we've been able to prove that for this particular question we are going to be making use of x equals the square root of 1 plus x to be our function which can otherwise be written as 1 plus x to the power of 1 all over 2 now not forgetting the equation xn plus 1 is equal to g of xn so we carry out the very first iteration for the first iteration n is equal to 0 so we have x not here to be equal to 1 so if n is equal to 0 this means that xn plus 1 becomes x0 plus 1 which will give us x1 so that means our first iteration x1 okay x1 is now going to be equal to g of x naught so this simply means that for this given equation um, you plug in the value of x naught in place of g remember that this is now going to be called g not forgetting that we said you have to rewrite the equation to obtain x um, to be equal to what g of x so that means the whole of this 1 plus x to the power of 1 over 2 is simply g of x so now we find x1 by plugging the value of x naught into the equation um, so we'll do that and see this is now going to be equal to we have 1 plus x in place of x now x becomes x naught that becomes 1 plus x is 1 to the power of 1 all over 2 so you have 2 to the power of 1 all over 2 so let's obtain 2 to the power of 1 over 2 so that simply gives us approximately 1.4142 and when performing iteration i've said that repeatedly over in my videos always take at least four um, decimal places for your approximation approximate at least up to four decimal places and you can iterate if two decimal places converges you can post your con um, your iteration there if at least two decimal places converges you can post your iteration there so for the first iteration we have the value to be what 1.4142 now for the second iteration you're going to have so for the second iteration all you need to do now is plugging the value of the first iteration into the same equation that's all that's why the fixed point iteration is quite easier okay compared to every other iteration so the second iteration now that means the equation is now going to be um for the second iteration x is now sorry n is now equal to one remember we started from m being equal to zero now n is equal to one and if that's the case the formula becomes x one plus one which will now give us what x two so that means that we are going to have x two to be equal to g of x1 so which means plugging the value of x1 into the same equation for g um, into the equation of x equals g of x which is 1 plus x to the power of 1 over 2 so this is now going to be equal to this is now going to be equal to we have 1 plus x x now becomes 1.4142 which is the previous value obtained for um the first iteration so this to the power of 1 all over 2 so let's obtain this value and see so this is going to be 2.4140 to the power of 1 over 2 so that simply gives us approximately 1.55538 
so the next iteration which is the third iteration you also plug in this value into the equation it's as simple as this so that's why the fixed point iteration um, is very easy so for the third iteration okay third iteration that means you're going to now have what x3 x3 is now going to be equal to 1 plus x now becomes the value of x2 which is 1.5538 five three eight to the power of one all over two so let's obtain this value as well so you're not going to be computing two point five five three eight to the power of one over two that gives us approximately one point five nine eight one okay you have one point five nine eight one approximately so you go on now and carry on with the fourth iteration still the same thing plug now this value into the equation so for the fourth iteration, you are going to have x4 to be equal to, you have 1 plus, that becomes 1.5981 to the power of 1 all over 2. So let's see what we obtain here. So you are going to have 1.6119 approximately. So you perform the fifth iteration. Okay, so fifth iteration. So x5, still the same thing. This becomes now 1 plus 1.6119 to the power of 1 all over 2. So let's see what we obtain. So this gives us approximately 1.6161. Now you see that for the fifth iteration, the root has converged up to correct to two decimal places. In the previous root, I have 1.61. In the current root, I have 1.61. So which means correct to two decimal places, this root has converged. So you can choose to leave your iteration here and say correct to two decimal places, the root of the equation has converged and the answer is simply 1.61. But let's try the sixth iteration and see what we are going to have. Let's just try the sixth iteration and see what that gives us. So sixth iteration, x6 is equal to, I have 1 plus 1.611, sorry, um, 6161, 6161 to the power of 1 all over 2. So let's see what we'll have. This will become 2.6161 to the power of 1 over 2. So once again, this gives us approximately 1.61 seven four so again you see now that the root is still repeating correct to two decimal place um you can see here we have 1.61 over here we also have 1.61 over here we also have 1.61 so which means the correct answer or the correct truth to that equation is simply um 1.61 x is equal to 1.61 that becomes the correct answer to that given question so, so guys, that's how you employ the fixed point iteration to approximating values in numerical um, analysis. In the next video, we are going to be solving complex examples involving trigonometric functions under the fixed point iteration. I'm sure you want to be a part of that video, so do well to um, tap the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on that video when it drops. I will see you in the next video. Thanks.